Corals have been adapted over the centuries to use tiny trace amounts of nitrogenous compounds and stuff in the environment around them as fuel. Now, it's important for you to know that ammonia is actually the easiest thing that they can use to convert into energy for growth and photosynthesis and all of that. And because of this, corals are not harmed in any way when they're put into a tank that is going through the nitrogen cycle that actually still has ammonia left in it. In fact, they are beneficial. Let's talk about it. Today's video is probably going to ruffle a few feathers, and that's okay. Sometimes feathers need to be ruffled and we need to work through our differences and see what comes out on the other side. So what I would ask is for you to go into this video with an open mind. Later in the video, I'm going to drop a couple of qualifying statements, so at least stick around for that. Corals are built to absorb these nutrients in their environment directly through their tissues. They actually get up to 90% of their total nutrition from this process. But it's not the coral itself that's doing this. It's a symbiotic organism found within the tissues of the coral called zooxanthella. This is a little tiny dinoflagellate that grows in population inside the coral, imparts at least some of the color to the coral, and can be the reason that your corals turn brown or white over time if things are not the way that they should be. Now, as the corals absorb these nitrogenous compounds through their tissues, it goes to the zooxanthella. They then process it in a way that we're going to talk about in just a minute. The result of that process, the waste from the zooxanthella, the things that they can't use for their own growth and photosynthesis, is what feeds our corals. And as a side note, this is also why heavily feeding and broadcast feeding our tanks for corals is just not required. Corals only uptake about 10% of their nutrition from active feeding through their mouths. The rest is all done through photosynthesis and light. So let's break this down a little bit further and talk about why ammonia is the preferred fuel source for corals. As we stated, the zooxanthella need nitrogen. Of course, they need other stuff as well to grow, but we're just talking about the nitrogen sources here. Ammonia is already in a very simple form of a nitrogen source. And because it's already simplified, it's easier for the zooxanthella to process it into usable things and go through their biological processes. You can basically think of it as like a compact, high energy nutrition type of thing. Something that isn't going to take a ton of energy to break down into useful components. And you might say, Logan, I thought nitrates were the thing that we want in our tank to be used for photosynthesis and all that. And that is true but the nitrates that are uptaken by the corals have to be broken down first in a reverse cycle from the nitrogen cycle back into nitrites and then back into ammonia before it can actually be used. The nitrates themselves are not really that useful in the grand scheme of things. This reduction process actually uses way more energy to get back to that original thing, the ammonia, than it does to just start with the ammonia in the first place. It has to go through multiple enzymatic processes which use up more energy, like I said, and then also takes additional time. Now, I did find one study, and let me be very clear here. This study applied to plants, not corals. So don't quote me on this number. But in that study that I read, it was discussing the reduction rate and energy consumption or energy expenditure, actually, of converting nitrates back into ammonia for the plants to use. And it took anywhere from four to five times more energy and time to go through that conversion than it did for the plant to just uptake and use the ammonia. Our corals are very similar, though obviously not exactly the same. By the way, my name is Logan and I run Reef Rookies, the most respectful reef keeping community on the internet. We are found here on YouTube, over on the Clock app, Instagram, and have a Facebook group as well under the name Reef Rookies with Logan, and we would love to have you join us. I'd like to send a special shout out to my brand new YouTube channel members and to those of you who have been around for a while. Thank you so much for contributing to the success of the channel. And I really appreciate that. If you want to become a channel member, you can do so by finding the link in the description or the pinned comment below. Oh yeah, and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you catch updates 
like this one. But why is all this relevant to us? Why am I telling you this information right now? Well, here are some key points. All of our tanks are going to constantly produce a small amount, a trace amount of ammonia through from the live rock and decaying organisms and dissolved organic compounds and the fish and invertebrates and even the corals themselves outputting waste. All of that eventually becomes dissolved organics and whatnot that the corals can uptake and use for fuel, including ammonia. Putting corals in your tank, even as early as day one, when you set that thing up, can help prevent excessive ammonia spikes because the corals are going to more readily absorb it than anything else. If it's available, that's what they're going to go for first. So especially in a situation with like a fish in nitrogen cycle, you can actually put the corals in there and help things progress along better than it would without them. Additionally to that, as the corals uptake that available ammonia, they're going to go through their biological processes and they're going to make waste of their own. That waste is going to become nitrates and phosphates eventually, which helps the bacteria that we need to maintain the nitrogen cycle grow and populate themselves. I've told you guys so many times that these things are not just a glass box with some animals in them. It is an ecosystem with an always revolving door of nutrients and use and energy and growth and waste, which becomes nutrients. And it's this cycle all over again, all the time forever. Now that qualifying statement that I mentioned earlier, I'm not talking about going to the fish store and buying $2,000 worth of corals and getting an $800 meat coral, you know, the high end, the nice expensive stuff and putting that in a brand new tank. I think that would be irresponsible. But going to the store and getting some very simple, very easy to keep corals that are extremely resilient, I need to pick up that palette, and putting those into your tank really isn't going to hurt anything early on in the tank's life. In some recent videos, I've really been talking quite a bit about the stability of our aquariums being the key thing that we need to try to be achieving with the tank. And having corals in the tank early on is going to help the tank achieve that stability just a little bit faster. It can help induce the tank into establishing a biological network sooner than if you had a tank that you waited three or four months to add any corals to. You can think of it kind of like this. The corals actually turn those unhealthy, unstable chemical swings into more of a steady nutrient flow sort of situation inside the tank. I have set up many tanks over the years and I have done it both ways where I put corals in very early into the tank and also waited three, four, five months to start introducing corals. And in almost every case in the tanks that I put the corals in sooner, those tanks did better than the tanks that I waited several months to put them in. Corals care more about stability and they really do appreciate a lower nutrient environment. The oceans, and I rarely compare our aquariums to the ocean because it is not the same thing, but the ocean's bioavailable amount of nutrients on a test is far lower than what we see in our tanks, usually being measured in parts per billion instead of parts per million. But our tanks are not the ocean. So keeping stable salinity at 1.024 to 1.026 Temperature from 76 to about 80 degrees, a reasonable pH between 7.6 and 8.4, and adequate lighting in your tank is all your corals need to survive. They actually don't require detectable nitrates if there is the presence of ammonia, even in trace amounts, in the water. We generally keep those nitrate levels up for other reasons, a lot of which are bacterial processes. They also don't require a certain amount of days, weeks, or months running. That's why it is actually a mistake to wait several months before you start putting corals in the tank. Now, of course, this depends on the species of corals. Some are more sensitive than other ones. And at the end of this video, there will be a video linked on the screen for some coral recommendations that you might consider putting in your tank early on in the tank's life. And the last thing that a coral does not need is a mature tank to survive. This is often put out there in the hobby that you have to wait for the tank to mature before you put the corals in it or they're going to die. It's actually quite the opposite from that. If you wait a very long time for the tank to mature, that tank is 
in a state already, it's become stabilized as it is, and then adding corals to the tank is going to upset that stability, and the tank's going to have to find a new rhythm. Time alone does not make a tank safe for corals. In fact, getting the corals in the tank earlier and faster way to get things moving in the right direction. And now for those corals that I mentioned to you earlier can be found in this video right here. So click that video and I'm going to catch you over there.